the text messaging uh, part of Growers Edge is very handy because uh, every day I'll receive a text that shows me uh, where the best local market is. That's what I like about Growers Edge too. It gives me the information I want on my smartphone so that if I'm not in the office, I still get the information that I need. Good afternoon and welcome to Grain TV. It's May 31st, 2013. I'm Logan Burgess. To my right here is Brock Shimano. Well, Brock, let's jump into fire tip. See how the grains closed out the week here on a Friday. As you can see, we had old crop corn trading up seven and three quarters. New crop corn picking up four and a half. Old crop soybeans up 14. New crop picking up 13. We had Chicago wheat trading up six and three quarters. Kansas City wheat up five cents. Certainly a lot of strength in the grain market uh, here to end the week, Brock. I know fundamentally this morning we got the export sales report. That was pretty closely looked at. Uh, what, what did we see there? Is that really uh, pushing the market here today? You know, I think it did have some influence on the new crop contracts yeah. uh, in particular. The old crop uh, export sales weren't anything really to write home about. Right. Actually, a marketing near low for, for wheat with just over 35,000 metric tons there. Uh, corn came right within analyst expectations at 85,000 metric tons, and we actually saw net reductions again for soybeans of 108,000 metric tons. But new crop is where we really saw the sales. Um, we out, outstriped uh, expectations for wheat. We came in at 728,000 metric tons there. The high end of expectations was right. just 450, so we beat that quite a bit to the high side. Corn came in at 789,000 metric tons, uh, just below the high end of expectations. And uh, for soybeans, we came in at 756,000 yeah. metric tons, which was about uh, 150,000 metric tons above uh, the highest end of expectations. Wow. But Cer certainly some numbers there lending support to new crop. I know that here in a couple weeks we are going to be getting uh, the the uh, June WASDA report. Kind of in terms of the pace needed to meet USDA expectations, where are we sitting at right now? Yeah, let's take a look at the models that we've been uh, following all marketing along here. If we take a look at soybeans, uh, you can see the red line is the seasonal pace to meet that current USDA projection. You can see that last blue bar is what we saw last week for uh, export sales. You can see we did get those net reductions. That leaves us on soybeans about 47 million bushels ahead to meet the current USDA projections. For corn, we're about 14 million bushels behind. Uh, and for wheat, if we take a look at the chart here, you can see that towards the end of the market year, we have had strong export sales on the old crop wheat. Right. Um, for export sales, and even this last week, we did have a market year low, but it was still above the seasonal pace to meet the current USDA projections. But for the year, we are about 21 million bushels behind. The end of the market year is actually uh, June 1st. We do have one more week of export sales to report, but uh, you know, I, I would have to imagine that the USDA is going to have to make some sort of revision, yeah. especially to that wheat uh, export uh, figure. Okay, well, we'll keep you posted on that coming into the June WISE report, as I said. Uh, in general, that's kind of the fundamentals on the export side of things that we saw today in the grain market. We certainly had some movers, though, in the cash market here. If we take a look at uh, spot corn basis across the U.S. here uh, on this map, as you can see, relatively unchanged. Uh, we did have the Gulf picking up four cents. Pacific Northwest was down six cents and ethanol facilities in general were, were relatively unchanged, just down a penny. Uh, not a lot to report in the corn market right now, but as you can tell from this slide, uh, we do have some weakness on the upper Mississippi River as flooding has become an issue, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Turning our attention here to soybeans, though, uh, soybeans uh, on average were down seven cents across the U.S., and if we remember to last week when we saw a 50 cent decline, uh, in spot soybean averages across the U.S. So the, the rate of decline has slowed a little bit, but uh, still a relatively big move here just this week for soybeans. If we look at kind of where the weakness was, we had uh, down eight cents out of the Gulf and down 15 cents uh, out of the Pacific Northwest. So certainly uh, it seems like a little bit of uh, lacking demand has taken a little bit of basis out of the export market, but if we keep an eye uh, domestically here on crush facilities, we have seen some strength there. Uh, soybean crushing facilities on average were up three cents uh, just last week. And if we go out to the Western Corn Belt, we saw some, uh, some facilities in particular bump their basis up 10 or 15 cents. So uh, for guys that are still holding on to old crop soybeans, uh, particularly in the Western Corn Belt, uh, there could certainly be some good marketing opportunities there in your back, uh, backyard. And if you need help finding them, uh, feel free to give us a call here at Grain Hedge. You know, it does seem like the, the weakening of the basis for the soybean market in, this, in the spot market has really slowed down quite yeah. a bit. Like you said, two weeks ago, we saw about a 50 cent decline across the nation. Right. Last week, we only saw about a seven cent decline, so it does seem to be slowing down a little bit. But going along with that, we have seen a substantial rally continue in the soybean futures market. Yeah. And if we take a look at the chart here uh, for the July contract, or excuse me, the new crop contract, yeah. uh, the uh, November contract on the daily chart, this is a candlestick chart. You can see that we did butt up against that top end resistance today. We did break above it 
just for a short period of time here today. Um, but we, you know, we did have a, a few calls come in today, guys asking us if this was a good time to start pricing some yeah. of that new crop uh, soybeans. Um, you know, I, I, um, I didn't really have a good answer for them, but you know, Logan, if, if you want to share us what, uh, what your thoughts are on Yeah, that. you know, I think this does certainly present a good marketing opportunity right now. You know, if you look at this market kind of just over the last several months, we've kind of been uh, in this channel here. And with the action here just recently, uh, we're, we're certainly testing the high side of that. We saw the market, as you said, trade above that, that major top side trend line, and we weren't able to hold those gains. We saw uh, it close below there. That trend line today was sitting about 13 08. So that's a kind of a good number to keep in the back of your minds here as we move into next week. But but certainly I think this does represent a, a good marketing opportunity. Right now we see uh, new crop soybeans on the board above $13 a bushel for the first time since about February. Uh, and certainly if you think about the fundamentals in the soybean market right now, I really think as we move closer to harvest, Fundamentally, uh, we're going we're gonna to have some pressure on this market. We've had delayed corn planting, so there's some speculation we could see a larger than expected soybean acreage. And right now, there's no indications that we need to worry about yield out of this crop, uh, just given the, the soil moisture across much of the corn belt. Uh, so, so in general, bottom line, I think this does represent a marketing opportunity. Uh, certainly did see a very strong week for new crop soybeans. If you need help finding some uh, potential opportunities, as I said, in your, in your backyard there, feel free to give us a call here at the office. Our number is 877-472-4607. If you want to take a free trial of the trading platform that we use here on Grain TV as well, you can visit us over at grainhedge.com and get started there. In general, though, that kind of wraps up the action that we saw here uh, for the week in the grain market. Have a great weekend out there. We'll see you back here on Monday.